Welcome back to Castaway Keys, as today we are building for the Fusa. In our last episode, we went with a pretty basic habitat, but this time around, we're doing a Fusa overpass and working on a lot more theming. Without further ado, welcome guys to Castaway Keys. Well, welcome everyone. As we get started today, I want to continue a motif from our last video. If you have not seen the start of our series, there is no better time to check out the first episode right now. But if you don't want to, that's totally fine. What we're doing over here is working on this little aqueduct that would kind of continue throughout the entire zoo. It kind of stretches down the middle of our island, and yeah, it just serves as like a nice little guide to water in our park. I really do like it. So that's a little bit of something I wanted to get done before I actually work on the Fusa habitat. Always, I can always recommend this, is working on the exterior of the habitat and working around it is always one of the best things you can do for your zoos. And just being able to kind of ground your zoo, if that makes sense, always pays off when all is said and done. It just is so rewarding just to be able to see your build and frame it exactly as you should. Now, we are getting started on the actual overpass first and foremost, and I wanted to make sure that it would actually work. Uh, as we all know, climbing animals are a little bit glitchy in Planet Zoo. That is no fault of the developers, even though I, I guess it kind of could be. But I'm not going to hate on them for that because, hey, listen, I mod the game. I know exactly how tough it can be sometimes. But one of the things that I love about about this overpass is just the effect that it gives for you as you're walking through the zoo as it gives like a aspect for the guests as well it's just so cool just to be able to see it all come together and it's just such a very cool thing to have in a zoo to begin with uh, I'm very inspired off of the kind of overpasses that San Diego Zoo has that the Philadelphia Zoo has it's super interesting to see how Philadelphia Zoo actually handles it because if you have ever been there I haven't but I've heard so many wonderful things about it but the Philadelphia Zoo is not a big zoo in fact it's a relatively small to medium-sized zoo however they constantly expand and they constantly need to rework their stuff now where does a zoo go when it's already taken up all the land area that it can possibly use well the only real reason or rather the only real solution is to go up. So because of that, Zoo Philadelphia, Philadelphia Zoo, however you want to say it, has created what is called Zoo 360, which gives you kind of like a 360 view of the animals as they kind of make their way throughout the property. And doing this, they create overpasses for so many of their animals, whether it's for primates, whether it's for cats, it's super interesting just to see how a small zoo like that is able to handle just so much space all in one area and create these very unique kind of like, you know, themes going on. And that's exactly what we're doing over here. Castaway Keys is based on a small island. It's actually based on two small islands, but we'll get to the other one in a few kind of like episodes or so. We don't actually start to build over there. I haven't even built over there just yet is what I probably should say. But we're working over here on this little bit of a stone pillar, and this is something I want to kind of carry on throughout this habitat. I want you to be able to see the Fusas wherever they are, and I want you to be able to see them kind of go through their habitats. So I have two main sections over here. I have the actual main habitat, which is a little bit more of your realistic habitat, if that makes sense. So it is kind of your standard state-of-the-art zoo um, meshed over roof yada 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 but the other thing that i actually include is a treehouse for these guys to kind of sit in and you can see the treehouse from the guest viewing itself and i just wanted to give it a little bit of a unique look so the treehouse is based in a baobab tree you'll see that come to fruition soon enough but one of the things i wanted to include over here is just making sure that the pillars are able to cross over the pathway as i want them to now one of the issues i ran into at first is the fact that it doesn't look too good when i first started it uh, just logistically, it didn't make sense uh, once I was actually building it on paper. It actually did look kind of good, but with the lighting in Planet Zoo, and this is one of my biggest complaints, we'll get into that in just a little bit, but with the lighting, with like how I was building everything, it just didn't make sense. You'll see us move it in a little bit, but that was my main idea to have a big baobab tree towards like, you know, 
as like a focal point that you're gonna walk towards and then you'll get closer to it and you'll be like oh my gosh there's a fusa up there that's so cool um and then the next thing you would say is probably what the hell is a fusa and we'll talk about that in a little bit but one of my main complaints about the planet zoo engine and please don't take this as any form of hate for the game this is like one of my favorite games of all time i have like over 3,000 hours in it so i get to be a little critical of it but one of my main qualms with the game is the fact that we can't change the orientation of the sun so let's just say you work so hard on creating this beautiful zoo and then you realize oh crap it looks like it, it looks like dookie from this angle the sun is completely it, the sun would never hit this building yada 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 that is one of my biggest complaints about the game we can't change that it is able to be changed in Prehistoric Kingdom, which Planet Zoo just introduced a tool that Prehistoric Kingdom has that Planet that yeah that Planet Zoo was honestly behind the ball on, which is that Advanced Move tool. I love that new feature so much. It is so useful. You'll see me using it like all throughout these builds. Not really for something as particular as this, but if you see me doing something a little bit more organic, you'll see that come to fruition a little bit better. But what I'm working on over here is creating a nice, very detailed treehouse with all the new Indonesian pieces that we were able to be given from this pack. Really, really stellar pieces to begin with. You can see I used it over there for that example. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to make sure is that the Fuses can actually access that upper part. Uh, I eventually got it to work, uh, not really over here, because the whole idea was to have this big baobab tree coming out of the exhibit itself. They would climb up the tree, they would go across the way, and then I'd be like, oh, wait, where would they even go to begin with? Um, so I actually have the tree be its own feature that doesn't lead to anything. Everything leads to the tree. That, that'll be our first merch quote, I guess. I really don't know. But I was really struggling trying to get this to work, and that honestly influenced me to be like, oh, maybe we should change out this idea. It's not really working. So that's a little bit of a shame seeing as some, like, original idea that you had doesn't work in the end. It's a little sad to see something like that, but all in all, I think it works out pretty good in the end. It's honestly one of my favorite habitats in this zoo. So it's just cool to see that all come together in the end. And it's just really great to be able to see, like, just them exploring this habitat. What I also work on over here is a little bit of a custom roof. Admittedly, I had a little bit of struggling with this. I really wasn't feeling it to begin with. Um, I genuinely forget what we do over there. I think I actually just use the big thatch right there. Uh, because it's honestly one of the best things that you can do for a build like this. What I also do is add a few mesh pieces in here so that the um, Fusa wouldn't be able to escape. That's probably the most important thing over here. They are predatory carnivores after all. I'm not sure if they would mess with humans. I actually should probably look that up because that seems like a very interesting topic right there. But... I kind of just make sure to keep it all contained so we wouldn't have any escapes to begin with. I feel like that's definitely the most important thing to take into account right there. But one of the things I also wanted to have over there was just so much detail. So I make sure to pimp out the windows, really. <laughs> so it's just very nice, very over the top, very detailed, yada, yada, yada. And I just really do love how it looks in the end. Um, and I also work on the bottom of the treehouse as well because originally you would be able to see under that and I was like, oh, we could just use those fancy dancy new bamboo pieces right there. But um, I think it's good that we have that under there to begin with because we will be working into the area where that tree actually is soon enough. Uh, so you'll be able to see us working with lemurs in a little bit. Uh, but for the time being, I'm not really touching any of like the base game animals until I finish all of what I want to do for the DLC animals. It usually works better for YouTube that way anyways. People are always like, oh, I want to see who's made an exhibit for the sloth so far. I want to see who's made an exhibit for the Fusa. Um, but yeah, that's really it. It's honestly so weird building a zoo and then trying to theme that after a YouTube algorithm because I want to do like the heavy hitter. So I feel like the Gibbon would be such a fun build to have at first. Uh, and I'm trying to gauge what other people are doing too, because we really aren't allowed to communicate with each other during early access. So it's like, Oh, I got to guess what everyone else is doing. So I assume people are going to be like doing a sloth build first, doing like a Fusa build first, but I'm like, all right, I'll just go simple. I'll do the Gibbon. Why not? Um, 
but what I'm doing over here is actually working on a piano wire fence. Piano wire, in case of you guys are not aware, is a very beautiful fence type that you can incorporate in your zoos. Specifically for this one, I am using that grassland butterfly pole uh, that comes with the butterfly statues. It's a really awesome piece, and it's just a really awesome fence that, like, prevents you from going in. But since the lines are vertical, I don't know how, but it just works so much better for the eyes just to be able to see into the habitat. Maybe it's the way that the verticalness works for like the eyes i really don't know but that's kind of what i work on right there and i was having some troubles with the fusa actually being able to access the climbable area up there so i kept on trying to throw stuff in there and get them to really use that upper part because if i'm building a walkway and they aren't really using it it's like what the hell is the point <laughs> like so i do my best to make sure that they are able to access everything in there from whatever it is up there like the enrichment that i throw out there just to influence them to go from one part of the habitat to the other that is honestly one of the best tips i can give for plants oh ow that's my chair uh that's honestly one of the best tips i could give for a prospect planet zoo designer is use enrichment to guide your animals through your habitats uh it really sets up like if an animal is hungry, it's going to go to its food. If an animal is thirsty, it's going to go to its water. Just creating those very dynamic points in your habitat really goes a super long way with trying to influence where you want the focal point of your habitat to be. And since I want these animals to go back and forth between uh, the treehouse and the main habitat itself, I set up water in the treehouse so that they will always go up there. And then I have uh, just extra enrichment up there too and then they'll just automatically go back to kind of like the start of their habitat what i also tried to do was a little bit of hot wire but it really wasn't working out well for me um i really wasn't feeling it and i was like what if i just mesh this over what if i just throw stuff on top and it actually looks pretty good one of the other things I do here as well is create this lovely little uh, backdrop. So this is something that the Bronx Zoo does a lot. Uh, this is mainly going to be my inspiration for a lot of the lemur habitats you'll see going forward. Even in Hope Harbor Zoo when I will be recreating, uh, not recreating, but remaking our micro house into like the Madagascar house. You'll see that I tend to go for a lot more Bronx inspired things and one of the things they actually do is do these beautiful little um, backdrops in their habitats. If you are in the area or even if you're not in the area, Bronx Zoo is one of like the best damn things to check out. It's a really incredible institution. They do an insane amount of really good conservation work and it's a beautiful damn zoo to begin with. What I also do in here is just make it very rocky and create these nice dynamic areas for the Fusa to explore. So I'm using a whole mix of different items. I'm definitely focusing on those leaf pieces. So those would kind of automatically go to the bottom of the habitat when leaves die off and stuff. And I'm also doing a whole bunch of rock work in there just to give them a little bit of extra places to explore along with those little... um. And they kind of blend into the back, but those little beams and like climbing frames, I thought that was a super fun way to integrate these guys into their habitat a little bit more and give them a little bit of extra space. Let's just say, for example, if they need to clean the treehouse, they would just close off the overpass and send a keeper up to the treehouse. I don't know how they would. I'll probably throw them like a ladder or something like an access hatch, but it's like they would close that off. So they would just be able to stay in their habitat and they would still be able to stay enriched in the habitat, which is exactly what I want. Uh, so moving on from there, I also work on the holding building for the FUSA. So this is a really fun thing, uh, kind of based off of the other uh, holding area for the gibbon that I was making. And I also do these inset doors. Insetting your doors is such an awesome effect to give to your builds really do suggest you guys try that out so i have that right there and i also have a little bit of an elevated one which would indicate where the fusa would come out of so i have that right there it's the same metal material right there so i felt like that was very homogeneous i think that's the right word i'm pretty sure um just it works well so I also add a little bit of that fancy molding up top, just as a way to give it a little bit more character. 
Uh, when you're working with holding buildings, you don't really want to go too crazy with the detail because obviously that's where budget goes. So the more detail you add to a build, the more it will cost the zoo. So I'm like, okay, what's like the minimum amount of detailing that we can do in here? So I thought some funky little things on the side, uh, like a little trim up top would be the best way to do that. And I also make some custom windows as well. So I use these basic windows and I also do the shutters. And I thought that come... I thought that came out very well too. So we repeat, we repeat that a few times. Sorry if I'm tripping over my words, friends. Uh, so we repeat that a few times and it looks pretty damn good. So moving off of that, I also work on the roof. So I wanted to do a custom roof, but before that I wanted to get like a good looking roof to begin with. And one of the things I do because of that, I just use nice bright colors as a way to indicate, okay, so this is gonna look good like that. It's kind of like putting down a primer paint and then from there, coloring your walls. Uh, so I start off with like a nice white roof and then I'm like, okay, that works. What color roof do I actually want off of here? So that's what I kind of play with in a little bit before I actually, you know, I wanted to do a little bit of foliage work in there. So I throw a few little foliage pieces down and I also continued those little stone kind of uh, markers throughout the way. Uh, one of the other things I do as well, I didn't mention this in the Gibbon build, but I also do these small little fences down below. Uh, obviously, you could walk over them. This is something I pulled from the Queen Zoo in New York. They have these little fences on this little ridge right next to the bison habitat. And obviously, you can walk over them, but why the hell would you? Okay, now, I understand that some zoos do treat their guests like idiots, where they have triple, double, even quadruple fencing for some animals, uh, whether it be for moats, whether it be for hot wire, whether it be for glass panes and stuff like that. This zoo, I really want to lean out of that a little bit more and have a little bit more fun with that. And if that means I need to do like small little things like that, more than happy to. I really do enjoy just building differently to begin with. This is like, I really wanted to flex my creative muscles with this park. And I think it's really starting to show. Even these two habitats alone, it really shines just how well I love this park. So another thing I noticed from the Philadelphia Zoo as well is that they actually have these very occasional kind of like beams. Uh, not beams, but kind of like rope pieces uh, all throughout their overpasses so i'm like okay that is honestly a great way to incorporate a little bit more color color in builds is always super important like just being able to make sure that you have some color happening in your parks is just really great to have uh, otherwise you kind of end up with some very dull builds and that's not to knock dull builds at all like one of the things i always look towards bronation for is realism however if you do a lot of that you start to get those quote-unquote bronation blues where everything kind of just homogenizes and it kind of all looks the same now i am not knocking bronation builds at that but i always feel like personally to me i love a big old pop of color and that's exactly what i'm going for for this entire park even the colors of the foliage the colors of the buildings yada 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 even the colors of the animals is something i really want to include throughout here and just make sure it feels a lot more bright sorry if you hear a little bit of ringing in the background that is my dog and she just woke up and she's doing that thing where she rubs her face on like her little bed and goes crazy she is the best uh <laughs> so the other thing I want to include as well back here is work on this little holding area for the gibbons just because I had some time to do it and I was like well this area is leading up to the fusas anyways how could I make it stand out a little bit better and how can I make it blend in with the rest of the park because eventually I will need to work on that build and work on really centralizing what that building is supposed to be and I figured, no better time than a present to actually do that. So I start to do that a little bit more. I do a little bit of a roof for that tan building, but I'm like, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, I do this little funky thing, but I don't really settle with it. I'm not really a big fan of that. And I guess I kind of just moved on. I was like, okay, screw this. I'm not having fun with that. I'm just going to go do something else. Uh, so I add a few more pieces of grass everywhere. I just help centralize this build a lot more. Because we will be working in that little canyon down there. But for the time being, I don't really want to actually commit to anything. So I kind of just do what I want to do on my own. 
Uh, what One of the things I wanted to include up here is a little bit of a red roof. I felt like that color would stick out really nicely over here, especially when we're working with a lot of greens. I feel like red would be a nice contrasting color to all that. And it's just a really beautiful look when all is said and done. It gives you such a beautiful focal point. And one of the things I want to do over here, this is something I always recommend you guys do. It's called the mud pillar technique. Now, I didn't end up using this. Uh, but it's just a really useful technique to use to begin with. It's a really great way to be able to make these nice, um, just very organic curves in your builds. And it's just, it really helps a build stand out. Now, of course, I just go over with a lot of mesh. I felt like, okay, listen, this is the best I can do right now. <laughs> I'm kind of under a time crunch. So I kind of just mesh the entire thing over and real zoos do this too. So I'm not like unjustified in doing this. It's just, I was a little lazy. Can you guys really blame me? Like we, we all get a little lazy. Even real zoos get lazy. Real zoos cut corners all the time. So I feel like I'm justified in doing this if real zoos can too. So one of the other things I wanted to include over here is just making sure that everything is nice and flush. So I do a little bit of these little adornments right up top, just helping that flow nice in line with the rest of that actual habitat itself. And I was feeling a little funky. So I was like, okay, if it's all mesh up there, it's going to catch some leaves. So I figured, okay, I'm just going to put a few big trees right over that and put some dead leaves right on top. So it looks really cool and creates some really lovely shadows when everything is like nice and perfect and done. Super awesome. And then we do a little bit of extra theming throughout here. I'm like, okay, we can throw some enrichment down for these guys. We can throw some extra foliage all throughout here. Just help it feel a little bit more centralized. Add a lot of more plants in here because I felt like even though we already have a ton, we need a lot more. Like there's never a time when you don't need plants. You can always be adding them. So I add a few of those. I add a few of the monsteras because, of course, this is the leaf channel. We get to add a few monsteras here and there. Add some of those strangler fig roots just to help this area feel like it's a little bit more of an overgrown jungle. Really trying to sell out that vibe down there where it's like, okay, we're going to build down there. So I kind of just flatten the land. Add the ponytail palms everywhere because they're just such a beautiful piece. And I also add some foliage on top of the tree as well, just so it feels like, you know, all these air plants are growing up there. It feels a lot more like a jungle. Really do love how that all looks in the end. I can't wait to get into these cinematics. They're going to be so nice. But also adding in the tried and true scavlovia bushes because they are just the ip in me of tropical, of tropical plants. Wow, I can't believe I messed that up. And a little bit more extra theming down here. I like to add these small little storytelling things. Just those nice little rubble pieces down there. It looks pretty good when all is said and done. Uh, so I add a few more of those ferns all throughout there. And then you can see the finished build all together. Oh my gosh, guys. This was such a fun build. Uh, in case if you guys did not catch the last video, I really suggest you guys go check that out. Especially if you guys do want to participate in the giveaway for the Tropical Pack. I'm giving away one copy of it, so be sure to comment on the last video. Gibbo. Uh, you'll see that in the last few minutes of the last build. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Any new people, welcome. My name is Leaf. I'm not always this scary. Uh, I just have that DLC jitters. I kind of calm down towards like a few weeks from now. But thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the cinematics. I'll pop off right now because I got another speed build to record. Thank you guys so much one last time. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Goodbye now.